Um, hello, everybody. Um, so thank you for joining our second uh, meeting for the special interest group around regulatory affairs. Um, I hope or I think most of you have been able to, to join in the first one as well. Some of you may have been interacting already via the Slack channel. I hope we can keep it very much more interactive than last time. I mean, last time was the kickoff. So this time my intention was actually to just provide a little bit of an agenda and and some items that I think and others also shared on the Slack channel that are worth discussion today. So please chime in any any time you feel like this uh, would make sense. So it doesn't have to be just me talking. Ideally, it should not just be me talking, uh, but I took the liberty to actually collect some stuff uh, from the Slack channel, from the shared documents and from stuff that we um, discussed previously um, to just have a little bit of a rough agenda so that we can have some kind of a focused meeting. I also wanted to highlight that there's a couple of people joining a little bit later. I saw that on Slack, um, people said that they would like to join the 25, 30 minutes later. I also have to say that I have to hop out around 5.30 latest, absolutely latest today. Uh, but I think an hour or something like that should work for most of us, I guess. All right. Um, I think agenda is a bit straightforward. Um, maybe a quick recap for those who either forgot or were not present last time when we had the kickoff meeting in July. Maybe we can, can go through a little bit of the topics that we briefly touched upon back then. Then my idea was also that we go through this shared document uh, together here within the community, also visit the contents a little bit because that wasn't existing back when we discussed, obviously. There's a lot of things in there already, guidelines, different use cases, potential uh, interests that people have with uh, regulatory topics. And I think we need to really structure this a little bit and also uh, yeah, get some better understanding, common understanding what's something that we would like to focus on in the future. Maybe think about like a mind map, have discussions around that, and then potentially something that a good colleague of mine also brought up at some point uh, is that we could think about doing subgroups um, and form form subgroups uh, who have a more yeah more common understanding of of what they like uh, to focus on. So I know that there's a couple of people who work in academic institutions. I know people from hospitals who have a slightly different um, needs and interests. And there's also the pharma people who are also more likely to have different needs than academics. There is overlaps. So I'm pretty sure about that, but. We need to come up with good ideas on how to accommodate most of this, but still make it uh, feasible that we really have some outcome and some pragmatic output in the end of this uh, special interest group. That might take some while, uh, time, honestly, because if you look through the documents later together with me, um, you will see this is 25 pages already, so not necessarily very easily digestible. But I think it's just the point to start from and then we take it from there. And then also I have some extra point um, around next meetings. So um, last time we did it more on an ad hoc basis, but my gut feeling is it would help people, also people with uh, uh, project workload, other duties um, to have a regular schedule that they can plan around and that they already have in their calendars for quite some time. So um, maybe we can also briefly touch upon this within a few minutes and just come up with a solution on or if you want to have a regular schedule. Um, there are also already ideas about inviting for the next uh, meeting some people from, from different projects who are also working in that kind of areas. For example, biocompute project from the FDA would be a feasible candidate where we could reach out and already have connections via the Sekera people, I think, um, where we could ask whether they would like to present, for example, the biocompute project and their ideas and understandings of how pipelines should be validated nowadays. And also I wanted to highlight, um, we've been collecting this already in the Slack channel a little bit, um, also got some feedback already, but there's going to be a dinner a regulatory meetup face-to-face -face in Barcelona at the summit this year. So if people are coming to Barcelona, please just let us know and also sign up for this. If you're interested, you don't have to obviously, but it would be really cool to also see some faces who are on, uh, only uh, present here online at the moment in person in Barcelona. We've not yet fully planned that, but it would help a lot and tremendously if you already already let us know, okay, I'm eager to join and would like to also um, make it there. So just uh, do that via the Slack channel. Uh, there is, uh, there's an entry there. You can just vote if you, if, you, if you want to join. And then we can catch up in person. 
All right. Uh, anything I forgot, anything that anybody would like to also, or should we just go through it? And then uh, we still have some time for questions and, and discussions, I think, at any, any of the points. Okay. Meeting is going to be recorded, so please be aware if you say something that's going to be recorded for eternity, uh, also accounts for me. Uh, so yeah, uh, just keep this in mind that you recorded here. We wanted to share that also with the wider community and also have it uploaded um, so that people who are not able to make it today can also catch up more easily. Okay, um, maybe a recap from, from the kickoff. I think uh, overall my feeling was it was uh, taken very, very well. A lot of positive um, feedback, lots of interest. A quick question, yes. Alex, uh, before we jump into this. Uh, could could sure. you tell us where exactly we should sign up for the, the dinner at the summit? Um, you said it's yes. in the Slack somewhere. Can we post the link or something? I can even check... Um... Or somebody else who is actually in the in the meeting can maybe also do this. Okay. Let me quickly do it. Ah. I can take it out. You keep going. Okay, I keep going. Phil okay. is going to send Thanks. it around. Yeah, I think overall positive feedback. People were very happy about uh, this being started, being kicked off. I think there's there was lots of discussions like last time about future direction, what's in scope, what is not in scope, because regulatory... There's lots of different opinions on what this actually in, involves, what this actually means, what's kind of the intended um, scope of the entire meeting series on, on the entire topic itself, and lots of different viewpoints and angles to this. So I think that's actually one of the biggest points that we would like to address now very quickly in the next couple of meetings, probably also in the face-to-face -face hackathon. Um, maybe that's a topic that is more easily tackled there as well because we're then already having a couple of people there in physically physically there, and then a couple of people hybrid, maybe we can set something up for that. Um, the idea back uh, last time in the kickoff was to collect topics and resources first, because there was a lot uh, of people having already heard about certain aspects of regulatory topics, but um, there was no common, I think, common ground, common understanding of a lot of these subtopics. And I think the, the biggest important part would be to collect this and then go through the material. So identify some parts that we can then just tackle here in the meeting itself or uh, in the group, also maybe also in subgroups. Because um, yeah, there's also very different scopes, very different needs, uh, depending on very, where people work what they actually do, what they actually want to achieve with this uh, special interest group. Uh, I think that's uh, the lean summary of what was discussed last time. So um, this um, obviously has way more uh, content and uh, maybe if people are not, have not been able to join last time, you can also catch up because that was also recorded. Uh, also, the document that was started back then is uh, completely available. So if you go to the Slack channel, it's actually linked. So you can actually click on it and just open it anytime and read through it and also ask questions there. So actually also a frequently asked questions section there. Okay. Um, talking about that document already like multiple times now, um, I think the link to the document is in the Slack channel. We can also open it quickly now. Um, it has also a table of content about different things. This is not necessarily perfectly structured. I think lots of valuable information, lots of hints and, and takeaway messages um, that you can just go through. But uh, at the moment, my personal feeling, and also bear with me, um, you may have a different uh, opinion of that. Uh, it's hard to digest at the moment. There's different angles also. People who wrote certain subsections have a different view on things. Then myself, for example, then others also have a different view, which may be more my view and other views. And so it's actually, it's not so easy to actually sift through this and, and make the most out of it at the moment. And I think at the moment it would be most helpful if we go through the content to something where we just structure uh, the document a little bit more openly, maybe make a, so one idea I had is also to make a mind map, what's kind of the, the, the building blocks that we need to um, have in mind when we talk about this uh, regulatory interest group topics uh, and then identify what could be possible things that we could take up in within the NF core community guidelines, for example, and what are pro probably things that are more out of scope because they're 
yeah, so custom for individual institutions, academic, academic institutes, for example, hospitals and pharma might have very different opinions on certain subtopics or needs on certain subtopics that we are probably not going to tackle them within the NFCore community slash guidelines. Uh, one idea, I already mentioned it briefly, um, subgroups with certain interests could actually be formed. So I know that there's, for example, a couple of people with a pharma context, a couple of people with a clinician slash hospital diagnostics context, uh, context, context. So probably it would be making sense that people like that form subgroups who then go through the document and build something based on their common understanding that fits their use cases. And then we take that together again in another sec uh, session where we basically just look for overlaps, for example, because I think some topics are probably very, very easy. So for example, I could envision that documentation is something that everybody wants, no matter in which kind of area you work, but the level of documentation and how it should be prepared and how it should be uh, validated, for example, and what else comes with it, for example, that could be something that is a bit different uh, with uh, these subgroups. So let me let me quickly uh, briefly open that maybe, and I'll also share it quickly. So um, if people didn't already click on the link, um, we have um, yeah obviously a couple of people are already on it. Um, we have a little bit of a knowledge base section here with some guidelines, standards, and best practices. Obviously, we have some of um, we have some of the requirements um, that are uh, also lined up here. We have open questions that are currently uh, not yet been answered and also not yet been discussed. And we have links and resources to other uh, other things, plus the survey results from the kickoff meeting where we had a small Slido set up where people could just answer how they are using, for example, NFCore pipelines at the moment and how their setup looks like, what kind of context they work with, work within, so things like that. Um, yeah, so anybody who has anything to, to bring up at the moment with this, do you think it would be a feasible way, feasible approach to actually build sub teams who are then looking at topics more from a joint perspective, or do you think we should still keep it within the larger community group? Um, any any points, hints, takers? I mean, it doesn't have to be just me talking here. I also can't see everybody. So maybe if people want to speak up, just speak up. I'm gonna wait a minute. I can just say if, to break the silence, um, yes, mostly here to, to uh, check in. I wasn't there at the first meeting, so I just tried to get a feel for what this is really about. Uh, mm -hmm. so not much, not much else to say. Okay. Anyone else? Can you meet it? Oh, sure. Um, uh, one, one, one relevant point um just about myself for this meeting is last time i was joining as a member of dean dx who was in the clinical diagnostics um now i am part of sakara um so um i'm still going to be speaking i think a little bit more from that perspective because that's from the clinical diagnostics perspective because that's where i'm from most recently um but i do see the value in kind of like looking at um the different overlapping needs and, and and definitely it might be a lot more challenging to get something to the point where it's ready for use in like a clinical product, mm -hmm. um, like a, a clinical diagnostic product. Um, but if we can figure out what is sort of like the minimum viable uh, solution that as a regulatory group that we could ship, that would be something that um, I would still be super excited about, even if it wasn't like immediately addressing my needs like right away, uh, because I still feel like there's enough progress that we could make in terms of like preparing something for pharma that would also make a pipeline more useful from a from a diagnostics perspective. Um, okay. I, I, I do like the idea of maybe doing some breakouts kind of more focused on the needs of the different people, but I don't want to maybe 
I, I don't think maybe doing subgroups where we're kind of splitting up the energy into two small portions of people. Um, mm -hmm. that, that would be by one hesitance to sort of like creating dedicated working subgroups versus just doing um, split out groups from like in a, in a Zoom or something. Yeah, sounds sounds quite reasonable. I mean, uh, yeah, breakout groups is maybe also better work for this, honestly. I mean, um, yeah. Um, the idea was just that we, we have people with very different needs probably. And also, although there will be substantial overlaps and I think the, the idea of making these subgroup, subgroups slash breakout groups uh, is uh, coming from that, that we think it would be easier to just focus on a specific viewpoint instead of focusing on all different viewpoints at once. But in the end, you can still try to achieve something, as you said, like, where's the overlap? What's something that everybody would agree to? And then build from there and say, okay, this is like the building block zero that we need, that the foundational layer that we would need within the NF core framework, within the NF core community, to enable people, for example, to more easily use NF core pipelines in a validated pharma setting, in an academic setting, and also potentially in the future, also in the more difficult, I think, clinical testing setting. Yeah, sounds sounds reasonable to me at least. I mean, yeah, thank you. Um, from my point of view, looking mostly, I mean, this is this is a huge document, and most of it is kind of under knowledge base, which is just mm -hmm. really interesting reference material. The bit right at the top about planning, I think, it's the most relevant for me. I feel like for us right now because it's the, that's the kind of the action points um i i think these sound very sensible i don't really have any other feedback on them other than like i i'd be keen just to get started <laughs> um does anyone have any objections to doing any of this or any any particular things that they're mo most interested in think we should prioritize also think silence is a no I think my gut feeling also is and that's actually maybe also some reason why why I wanted to push this a little bit um is to get some pragmatically uh, something pragmatically going I mean it's not like there is a lot of people doing this kind of stuff so it's um, there's a lot of insecurities around there it's lot of lots of people who have a shared interest in in the topics but um, nobody really does this too often, honestly. So it's not so easy to actually come up with good solutions for some of these tasks or solutions that will work from the very beginning and will solve it for eternity. But um, I think if you get started at certain aspects, for example, I think um, one feedback we got from our internal auditing team was that they are completely unaware that some of the things that they would like to see when they run a pipeline validation, for example, is already available within NF Core guidelines and within NF Core um, pipelines. So for example, lots of the documentation, that documentation is versioned that you can actually um, use a tag to access something in a, in a versioned way, things like that are not Maybe evident for people who are very much into NF Core uh, pipeline development, but maybe not as evident to others. So it's something that we could, for example, also think about that we already try to identify these things and then uh, come up with a good plan on how to present this more openly to people who are outside NF Core, because that also solves some of these cases and problems. And then um, tackle one after each other um, some of these tasks that are already mentioned there. That that's not mentioned in what's what you're showing on screen at the moment, right? That's not any. No. Of those, no. Um, does that feel like that, that would be a collaborative task for someone like if you've got someone at BI who is in that mm -hmm. role to sit down with one of those people and someone from NF Core, and then write down, have a discussion, and write everything down into a guidance document. Is that? Yes. Is there anyone who can do that? At the moment, uh, no. <laughs> How many people on this call have regulatory people they can go to, go to and talk to, apart from Alex? I um, I do have uh, validation leads and, and regulatory people I can talk to. Um, I'm still trying to gauge a bit within the organization. So right now I'm sitting sort of in the uh, study operations, clinical operations space. 
and and Nextflow is more used in the earlier research phase. So I'm I'm trying to gauge still a little bit. Um, you know, we just had training sessions with Nextflow there and and trying to popularize it uh, a bit, but um, I'm not sure yet if there's that much of a connect that we that we actually need these validated pipelines, or if, if that just stays in a sort of earlier research where that is not needed. Mm -hmm. But I, I, if if there is a case for us, then I can I can definitely do that. What what would be useful for you within the research setting? Do you need? Is there anything you're lacking currently? I. Uh, I don't know right now, to be honest. Uh, I'm I'm trying to pull in some some people who are working directly there. Okay. Well, if um if we do have um uh, the ability to kind of get a list of like these things that uh the uh, the validation team might be looking for that wasn't obvious to them, I think one concrete outcome that would be probably pretty easy to do is like what is a page that we could add to the NF core website that is like using NF core pipelines in regulated, regulated environments and just like goes through a list of like, these are the best practices and things that are present in NF core pipelines um, that will be a good starting point for, for, for anyone who is interested in using NF core for regulated environments to, to pull from that single web page. Um, and that way we don't need to rewrite that for each pipeline that we're interested in preparing for regulatory submission. I think Susanna also posted something, but I if I if I open it, I don't think Slack will show it. You have to open it in a browser, I know it should work. <laughs> um, or redirect you. Yeah, so it's, it's to uh, the, a post you put there where you've asked, uh, posted a link to, um, uh, if you go into the HackMD, Alex, I've just linked it there. Um, linking basically to um, to two documents that, that our, our community have, which is very similar to what we're discussing here. Mm -hmm. um, definitely could use that as a template. Yeah. Uh, uh, software development lifecycle, so SDLC, and um, so that's this is like a twenty-four lot page long document, and it's is which sounds like a lot, but it's it's really not very much here. I wonder if we could even just take the headings. <laughs> mm -hmm. Archer loves their PDFs. <laughs> yes. What well, what I would like to do before we put too much effort into this is um, send we, we we could maybe send this to someone we know working and be like, would this be useful? Because I'm a little bit cautious of writing stuff before we really know that it's going to be used by anybody. I mean, making a proof of concept or something like that, where we where we think about okay, how could we tackle it? That's one thing, but. I would also be cautious writing something in detail already and then just finding out, okay, somebody else wrote something similar that we mm -hmm. can just build up on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, yeah, this is a great suggestion to use this as a as a reference. Yeah. Um is that something you could do on your side with BI, Alex? I know we had someone join in the kickoff. To some extent, yes, I think so, because there's going to be how to guide some how to do these pipeline development things in the future. So we could, to some extent, probably commit to doing some of it at least. But um, it's going to be pharma focused, obviously. I mean, on the other hand, uh, as Ken already outlined, that doesn't mean it's it's bad because it's just it might actually be too much for some people. For others, it might not be enough. But um, that doesn't mean it's it's bad for the community. And if we even come up with such a page, for example, where we list, okay, this is where you find the information that you would like to have and would like to see in an audit case, fair enough. I mean, that's already better than what we have at the moment, I think. Mm -hmm. And it's probably also better than what I'm aware that others have who are building pipelines like out in out in the open. My my 
th thinking is that we should just try and get something we should produce something <laughs> and once you have something it's much easier to move on from that where yes. if we're too, too worried about satisfying everyone it's too, it, chances are just we won't never write anything yeah that sounds good yeah and so also, also uh, and and like make the well, there's some really nice quote about this which i can never remember but like choose the smallest project you can which you can complete fully <laughs> um so sort of like if we try and come up with an initial project which is very well tightly scoped we, okay like this is a good example that's why i honed in on this this is quite a good example it's like okay right one pager docs in the nf core docs saying this is all the stuff we do which would be interesting to someone working in accreditation it's quite easily achieved and then we have mm -hmm. something to show for um for the regulatory group and get people interested and kind of build from there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sounds good. Yeah, can still uh, can still improve on that. I mean, it doesn't mean that it has to be fixed like that. I think, right? So, okay, I'm gonna go back to the slides because I think at the moment it doesn't make much sense to actually go through all of the slides that I have here. I just outlined a little bit here, basically um, already that uh, we may have. Is it okay if I keep it like that so that people can still read them? Um, break out Oops. again. So um, yeah, we have uh, so something that I just came up with, we may have very different viewpoints and actually some of this was already stuff that we now discussed. And I think in, in many, in some cases we will probably have, have overlaps. In other cases, it might not be like that, but um, the question is, is it something that we would like to tack in the first place? I would rather than also say, let's go for the ones that are really um, like so basic that we really would like to have them in all cases and then uh, take it from there. Um, did I? So my understanding and also maybe that's something that wasn't wasn't 100% clarified in the end after the kickoff. My understanding at the moment is that really we would like to make it serve as a point in NF Core as a special interest group who tackles topics around regulatory uh, questions and uh, needs for people so that we really kind of influence guidelines for pipeline development, maintenance, and best practices around that. That's something that NF Core already has. So we're building on something already, but we can probably influence this also from the perspective that is coming from authorities in the end, coming from pharma, coming from clinical testing labs in the end, hospitals, and other stakeholders who would like to um, use pipelines a bit more uh, in clinical daily work, maybe even, or pharma uh, trial work, and uh, thereby either making it more obvious, as we said on a, in a single web page, for example, per pipeline, where we say, okay, this is what already is done, or even improve upon that. If we, for example, identify something that is a gap that we could tackle within NFCore quite easily across all pipelines or even single pipelines that are more of interest, then it would be something that we could also, for example, um, invest a little bit into from, from our perspective, for example, because we don't want to build this inside um, the company, but rather would like to also do this in a more open source way that we just contribute this to a more general framework so that it's also easier for us in the future to build pipelines that are then hopefully also acceptable for authorities uh, in a general sense. Um, because we do it internally, it's a little bit more tricky to do so. So, so, so one question here, um, and, and this perhaps might be a useful discussion point from like seeing how different people view at this. So NF core pipelines, we have like our test, our, our test run and the test underscore full profile. Um, and there's also all of the NF test unit tests. Uh, if we were to look at like preparing a pipeline like RNA seq for regulatory like acceptance, um, which of those test data would need to be captured from um, like GitHub Actions or some other place? And what what would that kind of storage need to look like? How long of a time span does it need to be kept? In what way does it need to be accessible or presented? So my... that's too. So the internal the internal guidance I got for this uh, so far is, uh, if we just run the pipeline tests as they stand at the moment, this is not going to be enough. 
you will have to have, for example, dedicated samples, dedicated, for example, you can buy um, tissue cell line samples, you can sequence them, you know exactly what to expect, and then you run through a certain pipeline, for example. RNA-seq is a bit more tricky because transcriptome, it's not so easy. But uh, for others, for mutation calling, SAREC, I would say in this case, for example, you could say, okay, I know that this cell line has certain mutations. And if I find them, I can compute certain certain metrics, for example, like specificity, sensitivity, things like that. Then I can say, okay, I trust this pipeline to do the right thing with this cell line. So if I repeat this with multiple cell lines, with multiple data sets, then in the end, I can, for example, say, okay, I have enough trust into this pipeline, how it's been set up. If I run it with this set of parameters, with this documentation, this version, then this is good to go. For RNA-seq, maybe a different thing. For RNA fusion, for example, I was already in, in contact with Anik on that, who's the main developer. I think she's also on the call, right? Um, for RNA fusion, we actually did that. We even had cell lines where we actually bought them, we sequenced them, and then I ran the RNA fusion analysis internally with uh, with this as test data to just validate basically how, how good it really is. These type of tests are a bit more in detail. However, we could document, okay, NF Core does the basic testing, NF Core runs uh, functional testing, it runs all the unit tests, which is already a lot actually. And then on top of that, it depends on what you need. I mean, if you really want to run this in a trial setting, then you will probably need to do some more detailed testing in terms of validation of the pipeline with extra test data that you need to create. Depends. I mean, uh, if you can run this with GUP or other public resources that are openly available that you don't have to really sequence yourself again, easy. But that's not probably that's probably not existing for all of the special special use cases within NFCore. But it's certainly something that we could also build into this general framework where we tell people, okay, this is what an authority will look for. You have to create kind of a like an archive of all of this basically. And then on top of that, you could and should probably run um, additional validation tests with cell line data, for example, or some other data, if you really want to submit this with a clinical trial. But that's just our viewpoint. Yes, Phil, please chime in. Morris, beat me. Go on, Morris. <laughs> I think you were waiting to talk for a while. Didn't find the oh, sorry. Yeah, I can't see. I, I, I was, I'll be very quick. What I was going to say was um, back in the previous life at SciLife Lab, we validated the RNA seq pipeline a million years ago with, with cell, sequencing cell lines. Um, I think it was GM12878. And I bet there's loads of places who are doing their own internal validations and sequencing. So I suspect that a shortage of sequencing data is not going to be the problem. It'll be identifying it, centralizing it, and and determining what the truth set and what the what the criteria are for passing that validation are. Mm -hmm. Yes. It'd be nice to centralize it. Yeah, I just want to add my view. I, I think having a full validation of, of a pipeline sort of externally. Um, I'm, I'm not sure that's really going to fly. So no. I think it, it's more about how far could one go in, in supporting than an internal validation. Um, and obviously, if we do get uh, input from authorities uh, on, on, on that, uh, that would be very strong support to, to them have hopefully a very minimal internal validation on top. Yeah. Yes. Somebody else also has yeah. to Yes, uh, I, I wanted right. actually to, to bring up the same as that Maurice just, just brought up. We are usually, um, we are validating with the library preparation uh, and our samples carry special, they are, they are special to our Samples, so so yeah, internal validation will not be able to we will not be able to bypass. But benchmarking, um, that we are sure that uh, that versions of the, the the pipelines always have the same quality, at least that we could we could externalize. Yeah, I I mean yeah, I fully agree. I mean for us, it's it's been like that, that we also don't think that we should completely validate outside of, of the company. That's not going to fly as Moritz and you already outlined as well. But what we can do, and I think that's actually also helping a lot with validating pipelines in the future, is 
that we make it as easy as possible within the NF Core framework and the community that we just provide guidelines on how to do this properly, how to, for example, incorporate your own data into it so that you can also run some internal validation samples with it. And if you do this already, that's already helping people actually doing this more frequently, more quickly. And thus, um, potentially, if people are also willing to share that data, then they can also just upload a report, for example, say, okay, we validated this with this type of data, for example, already. That would already increase trust as well in, in a certain pipeline, at least. I mean, if we, I, I bet we can't do this for the NF, NF core pipelines in general, but I think at least for the ones that are more applicable to the hospital slash clinical testing, pharma setting, that's probably a, a possible thing to do. But yeah, I think there's another one person mentioned something. Yeah, Anke. Uh, yeah, I was uh, thinking about this uh, benchmarking thing that you brought up now, because maybe it would be a possibility to um, benchmark per pipeline. So do not have it like separately, but you have it as like a sub workflow or something that in the end, when you um, release a new version, it runs uh, just like testing, but with benchmarking, run to, runs a benchmarking workflow and then displays this also on the NF Core page. So this would be a first step towards showing that your pipeline at least is not uh, performing worse. Or for some people, it might be interesting to see, I don't know, for this specific part of my pipeline now in the new release, it's not better. So I can still use the older version. But uh, for other things that I use the pipeline for, it's improved so much that I have to use the new version or something like that. That was something that I was thinking about a bit. Yeah, to follow on from that, you kind of tailed nicely into what I was going to say, which is we have the test full data sets. Um, and the idea was to kind of use this for the validation. That was that was why we started it in the first place. And we have the, that's why we keep the results from the output. So every single release has this full set of take the results. And the idea was that we could use that to say, you know, anyone who's doing validation can say like, look, here's a set of results, here's the previous results and just compare them and, and be happy without having to run loads of stuff. Like we've already centralized the running. Um, and I agree, it'd be really nice to have some kind of downstream steps to do that comparison. So we could publish that comparison though, it would be very pipeline specific. Yeah, Anik. Uh, so yeah, I just want to say, I mean, doing simple benchmarking in recall rates on SND and Indels is very, that's very easy <laughs> compared to doing a lot of the other things. Uh, I don't know, comparing structural variants and all the other downstream tools. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah, but maybe it's good enough to do an, uh, like an e easy call on some cell lines. But, uh, I mean, it's never going to be everything, but it could be no. better. When we did the RNA seq validation a million years ago, all we did was we just we looked at the RPKMs and worked out a correlation score. And if it was like you know greater than 0.95 or something, we were like that's a pass. And then we looked at the lists of differentially expressed genes and checked that they were like roughly the same. I could imagine the same with structural variations. It's like you know, do you at least capture this list of genes, or is it yeah. kind of 80 percent the same? Just so that anything that is a big deviation sort of is flagged. And even better if you can have it as a, some kind of visual report so you can sort of scan it and get it just aids with trust. Also, I think it would be really interesting to see if we can either version the test data set so know that this, uh, this version of the pipeline was run with this version of the test data set. This is the version of the config that was used. So everything there needs to be kind of aligned mm -hmm. to say this is the setting that I was were using. I also, it was also, um, the other day, the, the Onco Analyzer released like uh, the pipeline. It looked really, really nice for us, the clinical setting. Uh, they had this idea of having stable releases, which I found quite uh, intriguing also. So maybe in a clinical setting, you can't update every three months or even every, well, yeah. And then having like security patches to old releases was also, could be interesting from a clinical side. And the regulatory yeah. side. More like minor releases that, that people are also doing. I think that's actually how, how people are doing it. I think at the moment it's Arik, for example, yeah. that they just do minor releases without breaking existing tooling and functionality. At least it shouldn't shouldn't break functionality. But, yeah, but it's quite hard even updating, like, uh, I is. don't know, even if you update the variant caller and the, the I mean, you get the same files out, but the results might be very different. The caller might have moved a little bit and you, 
So you, we would need to do a full validation again yeah. for those kind of things. But if you just update, oh, there was a security hole in this uh, program, then it would be interesting to add it, but not update uh, VEP, for example. We maybe don't want to update it. Yeah. If we validated it. So do you say this is something that Onco Analyze is doing already? I mean, they're mentioning it in their release note that they will have like stable releases of uh, of their pipeline. And I take this to mean that if there is, I mean, they will do security patches and small update, but may, maybe not updating the underlying functionality or adding features particularly. Okay. Nice and chat um, yeah. A bit of a difficult time zone, unfortunately, but. Um... Yeah. I, could I, I could I just add something now that we have the the mic um, about a um, validation report that if we if a, um, a user that wants to do a validation um, has just to create sample sheets and gets a, a, an automated validation report out with um, metrics that might be interesting to look at for example that would reduce the workload and make it a lot more user friendly. My gut feeling with this is that um, setting up fully automated things is quite a lot of work and will likely not happen for may very many pipelines. What I wonder as being a slightly less ambitious goal is just to encourage people to share what they've done locally. It could be like a set of fig share links, which we have on the regulatory SIG web pages or anything, just like appeal to anyone who's done this already. Can you just dump your scripts here and then anyone who has to do this in the future can go and look at all these fig shares and pull stuff out and reuse as necessary. Any thoughts on that? Has anyone done that? Not yet done, but I mean, we ran a couple of validation reports already on some pipelines from of course. So for example, RNA Fusion and RNA Seq, we have done some comparisons already to existing pipelines that we internally use, but also just validated, for example, the RNA Fusion pipeline with some um, uh, bot cell lines basically from, from a commercial provider that we just sequenced where we know the, the truth in terms of what, what type of fusions are there. And then we just validate it against that basically. Can we find them? Can we find all of them? Do we find the majority of them? How good is the recall quality? How many false positives do we find, for example, if, and then we, we have a set of parameters that we typically now use, which we consider like the best practice on how to do RNA fusion calling. So that's in a report at the moment. So technically, it could be something I have to ask if you can share that openly. But technically, since you can also buy the cell lines from off the shelf, basically, and they are not secret, it's not patient data or anything like that, that could also technically be something that we can actually share. I'd have to ask, obviously, but yeah. That'd be a really nice milestone. Were you going to say something else on that point, Anik? No, we, we also have reports, but um, we also use them with regular clinical samples. So so it's not as easy to share. Do you have scripts that you could share which are not reports? That, that we could probably, yeah. Yes, to oh, tie back, sorry. sorry, but we could potentially share, like if we're testing something and we, I mean, it would be, uh, we've tested this on 20 clinically clinical patients. And then we can say, we, we found uh, eight, 19 out of 20 causative fusion events or something. I mean, we can do, um, we can happily share like the, the summary or like uh, the, uh, uh, the technical finding. We just can't share the underlying data, really. And we can always and have your email address so people can reach out if they want to. Yeah, know. yeah. What format would this be best as? Are we talking Google Docs or Figshare or web page or mm. the easiest for people? I mean, the gold yeah. standard for this would be data sharing in terms of that you get the full data set, I guess. But if you can't do that, then it would be still okay if people just share like a PDF or HTML report that they just created and some scripts, no? I mean, I guess it could be whatever people want. We just have a web page with a bunch of links pointing to wherever. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with that with like a fair markdown if possible. Okay. 
Okay. So maybe um, in, in, in the interest of time, since also people are already starting to leave and, and some people just joined, I think, um, yeah, exactly. Also have an Discord fixed share account. I thought about it where the account are. Yeah. Um, can also, um, I think that's one that we already briefly touched upon, so we don't need to um, think about that. So maybe it's something that we could squeeze in, in, in between now, um, rather than going to the next meetings. What would be people's thoughts on how we should continue with this? I mean, my personal opinion is um, we could start really digesting the, the main document that we briefly touched upon in the very beginning, identify like this the, the lower hanging fruits basically, and then just think about, okay, can we come up for example with the page that lists all of the information that for example, an authority would look like for, um, would, would look for within an end of core pipeline when they come up. Uh, with an audit question, for example, would that be something that we can just already have as a as a, as a primary target for now, and then and then try to extend this uh, to make it work for more use cases, for example? Uh, would people would like to look into certain aspects that we just briefly touched upon, for example, um, how how to share validation reports, validation results that they have been created? I mean, it doesn't have to be a fully fledged report, but as Phil said, like even if you just are able to share, okay, this is how you in RNA Fusion would run a script that collects all of the information you would need to create such a validation report or validation um, summary, then that would already be something helpful, I guess. Um, or in our case, I might actually reach out to our colleagues uh, who, who made the cell line, who bought the cell lines and who did the sequencing, whether it would be something that we can actually ask um, whether we can share at least a report, if not even the full data. Full data, I can't make any promises, obviously. I mean, I also have to ask people, but um, something that we can maybe yeah, briefly discuss. What what would be people's uh, topics that they would like to, to start tackling? Yeah, that go ahead. Yeah, I could just add like, so we are running a biocompute project with George Washington, uh, sorry. Uh, this university which runs the biocompute and we'll be, we'll be doing a workshop with certain CEDAR personnel from the TA so we can bring those learnings, what we can share, we'll discuss within the team. I think it's a good idea to also have biocompute um, invitation mm -hmm. as well because we are testing the capacities for certain regulatory submissions, <clears throat> at least with part of the next four pipelines. Mm -hmm. So we don't know that uh, what, what is the standard yet. But what our understanding is, as long as you can actually show the entire process with the parameters, um, that should be kind of fairly you know, possible. And there is an, also an FD omics workshop kind of thing this week. I don't know if anybody has, is joining from here, which will also kind of give us a bit more understanding of how these things are being done. So I think these two things, I, I, can, I can kind of share what we can in terms of how our learnings from biocomputer and the FDA workshop goes uh, because we will have a couple of trials where we are at least there will be some sort of submission linked if not our reporting CSR reporting so so we are kind of very much on those lines at this uh, so I can bring those from our end what we can share to the community mm -hmm. here right something yeah. I'll Really nice. My, uh, uh, my previous link with Biocompute is with Jonathan Keeney and the team. Yes. Washington, um, and we've worked together on the NF Prof plugin for Nextflow, which generates these files. And he's talked to the Nextflow Summit, and Ben from the Nextflow team has talked to the Biocompute yeah. or FDA Summit. Um, but it'd be really nice to hear the experience of someone such as yourself actually trying to use it. <laughs> so it, it is with his team only, with their team only, we are using the plugins. We, but, mm -hmm. but the thing is, one thing is generating the plugins. The other thing is, can the uh, data personnel from the regulatory side really, really gives a check, right? Like what are the pain points if they say that what changes we need to do? Right now we are running the POC only with the next low one. A lot of part of the R will be there for us because right now we, we have not nailed down that to an Excel site, but you know, it will take some time for us to <laughs> get the entire, but if the first one works, then that's already a win. Then that helps us to also bring that part here. Like how will this, uh, you know, streamline some of these things. So. Yeah. Absolutely. At the moment it's very theoretical. It's very, it's all like yes. lots of software devs saying this should be a good idea, but it'd be very nice to hear, <laughs> hear about it. In Something practice. concrete. 
yeah, we also not going without any expectations, but let's see how it works out. <laughs> we got the, the meetings and everything in place, so let's see. Is there anyone else we should be chasing? Um, that meeting that Ben went to, he, he made a couple of links with folks at FDA and stuff. So I was thinking about trying to follow up with them, but I don't know how, how useful that would be. Is there anyone else who'd be an interesting speaker for this? Like, or it could be someone in this group who gives a rundown of what they do internally, like what their process is and have a couple of kind of case studies, something like that. I will actually talk a little bit about it uh, during my talk uh, uh, in Barcelona, so. Thanks. That can be, uh, that can be one of the regulatory meetings as we all sit in the auditorium. Yes. <laughs> Probably they could just share the link to the FDA omics things. Yeah, maybe also something that we could try to join in. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, then next, next question with the next meetings actually is, um, do we want to set up kind of a more regular schedule at the moment? Because at the moment it was very ad hoc based and I think it helps people with planning a little bit in advance. If we come up with a schedule that works um, more on a more regular uh, basis, so like maybe maybe something like bi-monthly or monthly even, depends on on what people think is feasible and and also makes sense. Because I also don't want to overload people's calendars with meetings and, and catch up groups. Although we also can keep this shorter uh, if we run it, for example, monthly, then we can also restrict it to forty five minutes or something like that and just share updates and and people showcase a couple of slides maybe on on what they did and what they want to contribute and share with the community. I don't know what people's thoughts are on this um, because yeah, just putting it out in the open for people to comment on. Sounds good. This one. Because then I would uh, would try to um, set something up. I will also probably get in touch with you, Phil, again for the Zoom license because um, we run Teams and I know that a lot of the academics are not uh, big fans of Teams. Uh, so uh, I rather would like to use Zoom. So um, yeah, let's do that. Um, the we'll, not, we'll not go for subgroups then. We'll just keep it within one group as Ken suggested, makes sense. Let's just focus on the more pragmatic approach that we just tackle the easy things first and then build from there. And just I, yeah, focus a little bit more on, on that, getting something practically done rather than just um, yeah, fearing back from yeah, doing some something that is not uh, covering 100%. If you can switch over to the HackMD notes quickly, I've just put a to-do list at the bottom. Mm -hmm. um, scroll down. Keep, keep scrolling. There we go. Yeah. Is there anything else we can aim to get done before the next meeting? I think... I'll probably also ask internally here within our validation, um, key people, what they would like to see in, in a validated pipeline in a general sense, and also get that perspective on the table at least, um, so that we can also check with within NF Core more easily, okay, what's something that uh, we already cover, what's something we would probably have to extend because it's not yet there completely. And then uh, maybe others can also chime in there. I will try to do this quickly, so in a couple of days or maybe a week or two weeks so that people can also chime in there uh, before our next meeting. Because that would be also adding some perspective because I, I am aware that other, other farmers might handle things a little bit differently. Although I think there will probably be quite a bit of a overlap so that we can maybe jointly work on this a little bit. And if others also have their own things that they would need to have in place within NF Core Pipelines that would also help a lot. Vivek, is there anyone in your organization you can contact? We were saying at the start of the meeting, we found guidelines from our, from the R community where they have like clinical guidelines and it was like a big PDF with lots of headings. We were kind of debating whether we knew anyone we could ask, like, would this be useful if we wrote something like this for NF Core? 
Uh, I think that's a great point because we are following something like that, at least within known orders, we follow the R validation and we have something internally developed accordingly. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why we have not yet progressed from R to Python, <laughs> to be honest. So with NF Core, we, if we are able to develop something similar, that will be helpful. I think it's more like a decision guidance framework, right? Yes. Because because we have actually shown the uh, the the documentations for some of the pipelines that we're using in the clinical trials, shared with our you know validation groups and IT groups, and they feel so far that it's pretty detailed, right? Uh, but then that's one thing in terms of audits and IT validation versus what you submit, <laughs> right? So I think from if we have something like how our validation in pharma works, that kind of uh, that will be also very helpful. Um, I can try to figure out um, whom we need to contact because we are doing some internal audits uh, around at this moment. Um, so yeah, I, I can try to uh, just just drop me a line. What what would you like, and I can reach out internally to see mm -hmm. what we get. That'd be great. I think like um, from my point of view, just having a fairly simple page to start off with, but just like these are the things that would be useful for someone external to see about what we're doing within that. And of course, and of course, a huge doc space, like here's 10 bullet points for the most relevant. Yeah, yes. I agree, I agree. Okay. Does everyone here feel like they've got something they can contribute for next meeting? <laughs> and is there, if not, is there anything that you feel would be useful or that you could do? I mean, generally, so I, I work within a project which aims to yeah, uh, influence the way the data analysis is done at the university clinics. So I could try and find out whether there is some information or some centralized stuff um, on how this is actually done. But as far as I know, at the moment, at least in Germany, it's um, the way that everybody just, like each university clinic just uh, looks at their own pipeline, their own data analysis, and then accredits that, and that's it. So there's yeah, it's really limited information that I have and that I'm able to get, I think, but I can try. Um, I'm what, One thing that I'd like to offer is like for, for anyone who is uh, assembling the things that like what would be good to see front and center for NF Core website, I'm happy to work on like putting the PR together to, to put that documentation. Um, so if, if someone wants to pull me in, um, to, to help out with that, um, and, and get me connected with the right folks or have that discussion about what exactly we need written down, I'm happy to, to jump in and, and, and write that summary and create the PR for making the, the concrete action item one done. Maybe kind of good starting point would be for you to look at that document from the R community and just literally spend like 15 minutes, like no more, putting together the roughest of Google Docs, just with some bullet points and a few things. And then we, I feel like it's very difficult to go to people outside of our community and say, what do you need? Because they have no idea. It's much mm. easier to say, here's a document. What do you think? What, you know, what's missing? So it might, might do okay. a bit substrate. Sounds good. I will do that. It's actually also something that we, we figured out when we talked about um, the, to the topic in general uh, with our internal validation folks, because our feeling is that it's more like like systems validation or something like like that is far more established. People know what what they what they want, what they want to see, and things like that. But uh, if you ask about analysis pipelines with a bioinformatics perspective, that's a completely open thing. It's a very very different thing. Um, they are usually not getting their mind around it that easily because it's something that is conceptually probably also very different from what they do with the systems validation. So um, yeah, I think it would make sense to actually come with something up, come up with something shared with them and then ask for missing gaps. Yeah, really, really. Uh, I agree. I just want to put up one comment, sorry, I didn't put my, uh, raise my hand. Is anybody of you joining this? So there is this Pharma's, uh, Pharma Arc, um, consortia meeting um, at the end of the year uh, called Fuse. 
Um, I think that is where you will actually also get a lot of people uh, from the regulatory sides uh, from different pharma company available as well. So if we have something which we can share there, that might so we, we we from Novo at least a couple of our people uh, of our you know colleagues are actually presenting some how we are doing these bioinformatics pipelines right now in a clinical setting, and we'll share some of these things from the BCO part as well. If there is something we want to share from from here as well, just like a one slider comment or something like that, we can have these kind of things shared there and then pick up some you know discussions and stuff. So, um, so that just just a thing that I, I realized like we will be going to these uh, pharma uh, consortia meetings at the end of the year. I think it's called Fuse, uh, if I'm not misinterpreting. Um, and F U S E. I've just been googling it, but I haven't found anything. So maybe I'm spelling it wrong. Um, I'll I'll check the proper name. I think it's P H U S C or something like that. Yeah, it's 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 uh, P H U S C. It's Fuse Global. I'll just drop the in the chat as well. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. They 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 actually have a good. Oh. No, he dropped out. Uh, it's bad timing. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Okay, anyone who has something else what we would like to discuss today? Otherwise, we can give Vivek maybe a few minutes to get back. Otherwise, we can also close the meeting. I think nobody has anything on the agenda. I mean, the agenda I had prepared is anyways finished. I think there are a couple of topics to tackle um, here for the to-dos for next, next time. So that would already be something pra practically coming out. Be in mind, there's always also going to be a presentation about the regulatory um, special interest group at the summit. So I am also not intending to showcase this only myself, but rather if somebody wants to um, wants to um, join in, also preparing something, also sharing some updates, then please feel free to reach out. I will also share the slide links uh, before the meeting so that people can also maybe comment on them within the regulatory uh, channel, as this is anyways just a presentation on the on the a special interest group and not on anything specifically at the point at this point in time. We lost you, Vivek, but uh, welcome back. <laughs> um, I added some note, notes about the link. I, I, hopefully, I got it right. He was in the corner. So it's in C disk. Strasbourg. Might be possible to go and see. Thanks for sharing. Sorry, I was kicked out and I was having some trouble connecting back with audio. Yeah. All right. So I think we have a couple of to-dos. Um, if people are happy with that at the moment, then I think we can close for today. I will also make sure that I do at least the ones that I'm involved in. Uh, rather quickly in the next couple of days so that people can also chime in. I will also get some the feedback hopefully very quickly so that people can also take that, for example, up in the in the Google Doc maybe as well, so that Ken and Susanna also have some viewpoint from us internally as well included in that because I think that already can can be funneled into a into a single location on not multiple things. Um, yeah, and otherwise, thank you for joining. And see you likely then in October. Yeah, maybe yeah, October. If we if we keep it to a monthly schedule, I think that's something feasible. Let's say mid October, something like that works um, to also keep a bit of a momentum because if we do it twice, only bi monthly, it's not 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 enough uh, yeah, catch ups. I think. Cool. Thanks, so. Thank you, everybody. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.